Tony Farmer's talent on the basketball court made the Garfield Heights High School senior one of the top college recruits in the country. The defendant shall serve a term of three years, years which is the minimum. But the 18-year-old farmer may have forfeited a scholarship and his future when he attacked his ex-girlfriend in her apartment building in Bedford Heights on April 23rd. The court uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that <laughs> as well. Tony Farmer collapsed in court on Tuesday after Judge Pamela Barker sentenced him to three years in prison on charges that include kidnapping and felonious assault. The defendant is ordered to the custody of the sheriff for transport to the Lorraine Correctional Institution for evaluation as to transfer. And as Tony Farmer heads to prison, the judge says he only has himself to blame for the cloud that now hangs over his once bright future. It could have been alcohol, it could have been something else that gets consumed by the fire. But a significant burn pattern shows that there is something said significant. He has to take responsibility. And so there's much more here than probable cause. So I'll ask the court to find probable cause in both charges in this case. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. The testimony is in both sides. Question testimony. I believe the state has, in fact, that they're burdened, so therefore I am going to find that there is probable cause to charge the individual with the down over four general sessions for the way charge. Lane was sentenced for killing three teenagers in Chardon High School last year, and it was a shocking morning in the courtroom. T.J. Lane made quite a statement wearing a T-shirt that had the word killer on it. T.J. Lane smiled, smirked. Danny Palmer's mom told Lane, I hope you have a cold, harsh prison life with monsters like yourself. You are a weak, vile coward, she told him. Here is what Nick Wall's ex-mom went on to tell T.J. Lane in that courtroom and watch. T.J. Lane's reaction. I will have to eventually forgive you, otherwise you will haunt me. You will never ever be in my thoughts after this. Never. He was thinking about inviting you back to that, to that table because he felt sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Our defendants serve a term of life without parole. As to count four for the offense of attempted murder, this reaction from a confessed killer was the last in a series of intense moments in this Hamilton County courtroom. Mandatory consecutive underlying offenses. All those counts are left to consecutive each other. Colgate Prep for time served amount of 349 days. The families say this was the first step toward healing. It is also tragic. The convicted cop killer's former neighbor reacted to the judges handing down a second life sentence. But Nicholas Lindsay showed little interest in the hearing. There is no indication that this type of violent behavior will stop. The court has significant doubts about the defendant's potential for rehabilitation. In a 27-page order, the judge cited aggravating circumstances, including an escalating criminal history, before he sentenced Lindsay to that second term with no chance of parole. But Lindsay actually grinned when the judge read his ruling, the lack of remorse not lost on David Crawford's daughter, Amanda. A teenager who killed his great-grandmother with a hatchet was sentenced to prison today. Antonio Barbeau will be eligible for parole on his 50th birthday. Tom Murray was in court today for the sentencing. Instead of starting his freshman year in high school, 14-year-old Antonio Barbo will go to prison. He showed varying emotions in court, at times wiping tears from his face. He read only a few words from his own statement. There's a lot going around said by the news, DA, and many other people that I'm a cold, heartless, care careless killer. That's, that's not true. Then Barbo smirked and shook his head when the prosecutor spoke.
old Brandon Spencer of Inglewood bangs his head as a judge sentences him to 40 years to life after he was convicted of shooting a rival gang member. <laughs> Today, in L.A. Superior Court, Spencer begged for mercy from Judge Edmund Clark Jr. before sentencing. The period of parole eligibility is 15 years plus 25 years of life in accordance with Penal Code Section 12022.53d. This is to be concurrent. including murder. Our Lindsay Maloney was in the courtroom. She has more tonight. Jacob is my best friend. And I know what he did was wrong. I completely understand it. A sister's emotional plea to the judge. But he's not a bad person. Brings 17-year-old Jacob Muzon and 18-year-old Drake Campbell to tears. The person that they're making him out to be, he's not that person. The teens are both charged with five counts, attempted murder, murder, burglary, and two counts of armed robbery. The man sitting here today is not the one I once knew. He is not the one I fell in love with. He is a coward, and forgiveness is not an option for me. After everyone had their chance to speak in this Wapolo County courtroom, it was Dustin Armstrong's chance to say something about what he'd done. Do you have anything you wish to say to me prior to my announcing what I'm going to do here today, sir? No, Your Honor. You know, that's what I see when I look at Dustin. I don't see a monster. Bargo sat stoic in the courtroom. You, Michael Shane Bargo, are sentenced to death. He didn't even flinch when the judge sentenced him to death for the 2011 murder of 15-year-old Seth Jackson. Investigators say Bargo and four others lured Jackson to a home, beat him, shot him to death, burned and dismembered his body, then dumped the remains, all because of a dispute over a girl. The judge called it the most cold and calculated murder he's ever seen. The death penalty is not only justified, it is the only appropriate sentence based on the evidence and the law of the state of Florida. Seth Jackson's family decided not to go to court today. Bargo's grandmother broke down crying and his family didn't want to talk as they left court. But his attorney pointed blame at Jackson saying he was a violent person who made plenty of threats. To burn their house down, to rape them, to shoot them. Jurors didn't get to hear about that and she believes it will be part of his automatic appeal to the state Supreme Court. She also feels Bargo's age should have spared his life. He was 18 at the time of the murder, but the judge didn't see it that way, and he agreed with the jurors that Michael Bargo deserves to die. The defendant shall be taken by the proper authorities to the Florida State Prison and there be kept under close confinement until the date of his execution. Bargo's attorney said they will gather up all the transcripts and the materials from the case and hand them over to the public defender's office. An attorney from that office will file the appeal with the state Supreme Court. Reporting from the Marion County Courthouse, Jeff Deal, Channel 9 Eyewitness News.